The character tag system should be eliminated. Remove it. The Guild War declaration system should be reintroduced to the game. Offensive artifacts should be introduced to counter defensive decky artifacts. A system allowing players to vote on updates implemented in game. Create a separate cape slots for the pearl costumes, allowing you to combine it with other costumes as you wish. Imperial alchemy and cooking delivery incomes should be increased by two times. The delivery quantity must match the contribution points, not 50% of it. The stats for one artifact should be as follows. The Shai class should benefit from the new update just like the other classes. Hello YouTube, welcome. In this video, I will try to share the feedbacks that comes that came from the community. We have four different categories, quality of life, PvE, PvP and life skill. I'm live on stream right now, it's kind of early morning. It's been two days and I got over 200 feedbacks from community. And I'm very, very happy that you guys helped for this community and now I'm sharing it. I'm still just waiting for these things because we are waiting for developers commentary i will check and i will try to match if there's something match with developers commentary i will remove it or maybe in future like some of them will be on developers commentary or we will realize something thanks to the developers commentary and we will add new things before we start i want to just warn you while you're reading or while you're listening to me please if you realize something or if any type of like you know idea that comes to your mind Please do not hesitate to type in comment section because this is just not completely finished. So I can maybe add it in the comment. Uh, I can maybe add that thing from the comments, from your thoughts, and you're also community. You are a part of the community. I'm a part of the community. So in this document, you will not see mostly personal things like. For example, Jenny said buff Archer or something. Yes, we just with one line we talked about the imbalance situation in PvE, but that's all. This is mostly when you change something in this everything. If they change everything in this page, game will just become like another level that any game company can beat it. I'm not kidding because you will love them. Let's start, okay? For quality of life part, we are starting from there. A feature should be added to allow for the mass processing of items such as Kafra Stone, Elixirs and Mythical Spirit Powder, etc. In this way, players can avoid wasting hours on processing. Enhancing the Reforged Stone system to be more user-friendly, allowing players to utilize their preferred builds based on individual needs. We all hate this situation, like we cannot change it according to our needs. And this is amazing, this would be amazing. Completely overhauling the Alchemy Stone enhancing system and incorporating a protective mechanism similar to the Crown Stones in common items, but completely different. Adding a furniture feature to tents will enable people to receive buffs wherever they choose, wherever they want. It will be amazing, isn't it? The Shai class should benefit from the new updates just like the other classes. Shai is having issues to benefit like the other classes. Shai's cannot be main. Whenever they try to tag something, they have Artina Soul. So make this art solve this Artina Soul problem so they can start to feel like normal classes. Please do it. All party related buffs should be able to activate while in iframe 2. For example, you iframe dash and Shai is buffing you or your party friends is giving you a buff something. You can dodge it. You're dodging your own friend. Please fix this bug. It's morning, I barely speak. Updating all token sell items like managed currency in the game that are outdated, like all of them outdated. Each item should be revived individually and modified to the offer rewards that are appropriate for the current state of the game. They need to be updated and they need to be. The Rift bosses should offer significantly greater rewards based on the current state of the game. They need to buff Rift bosses. Like five minutes ago, I killed weekly six bosses of the Rift. You know what happened? I got Basilisk, I got Crescent or something like 10 million. Please fix them. A system allowing players to vote on updates implemented in game. A requirement of having played at least 3000 hours may be introduced to help to prevent abuse. So this system is kind of so hard for PA, I know, but it would be perfect. Imagine that you just read, for example, a sorceress update, a long update, and you will be able to click it to I liked it and I disliked it. It would be good. 
A system should be implemented in-game that enables players to prioritize the future updates. For example, PA will just uh, make some kind of... This situation will be same again, like the 3000 hours. They will ask you on the website, a survey, which updates should be the one, first one. For example, Winterland Part 2 or the Demon Land. You will just prioritize it and they will start to work on it. The character tag system should be eliminated and weapons. Th this is a little bit complicated, but you will like it. The character system should be eliminated. Remove it. Weapons should be made universal. And the new Family Gear UI should be developed. This way, we can play with our preferred class. I don't know if you guys like it, but I want it. As a result of years of game development, the disparity in gear stats between PvE and PvP becomes significant, necessitating a reduction in the speed of situational switching. So, for example, you want to grind at Arsha, but someone wants to do the PvP with you, you're just grinding with your PvE because the difference between PvE and PvP stats are enormous. It takes so much time to change your gear. So what if you could be just one click and change everything? Amazing. So you, you'll be able to change artifacts, crystals, add-ons, gear setup, reforged stones, and etc. The Dekia Lantern should be consolidated into a single item. It should be organized as one unit. And when you wish to activate it, it should prompt you as some kind of message in front of you for the level of the sport if there are different levels. For example, you want to grind at Ash Forest, Ash Forest Dekia, you just activated it. A message will prompt on your screen, level 1, level 2, click, you're ready. This spot will start. Why two different things? Why extra extra items? Isn't that you? I mean, you guys like developers just trying to just simplify everything in the game. Many other items. So no need mess. A simple software things can solve things. Can solve this. Two different set active at once. Maybe like any type of solution for these chronic issues. We all done. We all done for it. Horses in Crocodile Sanctuary item should be able to recover HP and stamina over time. If you guys put your T10s in the Scrog Dollar Sanctuary, they do not recover. It is a sanctuary, isn't it? A sanctuary is some kind of holy place for them, a peaceful, cozy place. But they're not recovering their HP. Funny part. Please fix it. The game should automatically decide which storage. This, this part is amazing, Chad. You will like it. The game should automatically decide which storage the items in the inventory will be sent via the remote storage. With a single click, all items should be transferred to the storage if you have enough mates. Another update. An update should be implemented to enable items stored in different locations and or another characters to be gathered into a single storage that we choose with just one click. For example, you have tons of Kafra stones in your characters, in your different storages, you will just, when you're in front of the Valia storage, you will just click gather all items, like gather all matches, matched items. You will just click that, it will just gather all of them together. Imagine how it would be perfect. You should be able to obtain items from other characters, even if they are currently equipped with the item. For example, you want to get artifact and you forget to just unequip the artifact from your tag character and you just change character again, change character again. Blah blah blah. All treasure items may be stored in family inventory. This is also good. You may like it. A new treasure item should be added to game that allows you to sell items to the tent shop. This treasure item can be obtained through a daily quest. A total of 30 days should be enough for it. Once you have the item, you will be able to equip it in your tent item window. So your tent shop will turn into like normal NPC shop. You will sell your trash load in there or any type of items that you want to sell it. It will be perfect. Why this is big? Make it 12. Field bosses HP should be standardized globally for all servers and they should operate like world bosses. Their income should be increased by 10 times. The incomes of the world bosses should be increased by 5 times and supported by a universal world boss token. This token should be exchangeable for various items within the game. It is also important to note that this token needs to be updated periodically. The drop rate on the Arsha server should be increased to 100. Additionally, the maximum drop rate should be raised to 450. This way, engaging in PV on Arsha will become profitable once more, just like it was before. For the main weapon, a new upgrade method should be introduced similar to the awakening weapons of Karonda and Garmosad. As benefit, 
it should offer 3% critical hit damage and 2 additional crystal slots. This item, hold up, typo. This item should be obtained from other world bosses such as Zarka, Kutum, Orphan, and etc. Please let me change my tagged character in desert. But if they removed the tag system completely, no need for that. There should be more options available in Magnus UI, such as Seoul, Kaplan, Trend, Shakatu, Sand Grain Bazaar, All Wisdom Tree, blah 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 blah. In larger regions, it should be easy to transport to smaller towns to save time. Guild categorization system should be added in game. Life skill PV and PvP. They mentioned that, but there is nothing for it. A feature to refresh buffs should be added to Fairy. Do you guys remember, for example, while you're gr uh, grinding with your friends, one of your friend is dying and he's losing the buff? You have to do it with your hand, manually. What if there's some kind of one button? You will click that one button, it will refresh the buffs, reuse the buffs even if you have them. Make treasure items movable by using mates, please. Quick recovery of crystals for all existing preset. Upon death, if you retrieve your crystal, if you just bring back your crystal, it should restore the old slots in every preset. Like you're just changing everything one by one. Why? I just retrieve it. If I just like respawn without just refreshing it, without just getting it back, then break it completely and remove from the preset. But when I die, Instantly it's removed from preset. No, please wait my response then remove it or just keep it according to my respon response I'm sorry. A warning will appear when your alchemy stone's durability is below 10 Similar to weapons and accessories and also like armors like you know when you have a durability issue You know that fix horse ride bug when you press M while getting on horse My stat UI page should be more detailed we need to view all the stats that can be added from a single page, such as total level experience, skill experience, buff, blah blah blah, many things. There are many things that we need to see. Node investment should provide additional life skill experience and a mastery bonus. Oh, this, wait, this is not a quality of life thing. This is life skill. Okay. Simplify the mate system to a single type. All mates I have should be able to use everything at any time. So if I need to use central market, then it is central market or storage. Like even if like even if we consider how much per they cost, they are same. So just make them one. Simplify them. Create a separate cape slots for the pearl costumes, allowing you to combine it with other costumes as you wish. There are tons of good capes, but the costume maybe you don't like it. But imagine that the cape will be different item, and you will be able to combine it with different items. That would be good. Valupak, Kamasilvi and Old Moon should be combined into a single item type. Their prices should also be lowered to match the value of match the value pack level. Players with a family fame exceeding 10,000 should be able to create all non-seasonal characters level 56 for rapid progression. So you will not waste time. You will directly start from 56. That's all. The church buffs should be merged into a single buff. Instead of three different buffs into single buff and 20 million silver maybe. Income from family fame should be increased. Totally agree. Additional preset slots should be created for pets. Yes, we need five more. A counter should display the number of kills need to obtain the title. We need to see how much is remaining. Totally agree. Costume boxes should be convertible to Chrome without needing to open them. It's a nice quality of life update. The video guide interface on the left side of the minimap should be eliminated as it is no longer operational. The information interface needs to be updated. H menu. The progression pass should be hideable for veteran players and it would be beneficial if it could be updated. Investment bags in major cities should be removed or updated. I suggest removed. The textures on the map need enhancement, particularly for the roads. Yes, roads are very hard to see, especially the side roads. There should be more customizations options in chat settings. The notifications should be removed when the enhancement of white, green and blue tier items, narrow and 12 items in from your guild, like is made in your guild. D, you have obtained a better item, notification in the bottom right corner and the items icon while in inventory should be closable in game options. So let's talk about life skill. <clears throat> Buffing fishing in both active and AFK situation to ensure the time spent in worthwhile. Approximately active fishing is approximately 1 billion per hour. AFK approximately 600 million in 12 hours, which makes like 50 million AFK per hour. But it's not like from scratch, isn't it? It's like you will be at 
at least like 1.5k mastery to reach these values then you'll be rewarded imagine every like you have good setup for life skill you have good i mean fission level every day you just leave your character and you will get 400 500 million it will be amazing imperial alchemy and cooking delivery incomes should be increased by two times the delivery quantity must match the contribution points not 50 percent of it so if you have 400 contribution points normally right now you're being able to you know deliver 200 but imagine 400 so the income will increase two times and remove the penalty of 50 percent two times and overall four times for example today you're making like a billion from cooking you're making 250 million from cooking if they just make it like this it will be 1 billion from cooking and alchemy and cooking delivery quantities should be remain independent of one another for example let's say that you will be able to deliver 400 cooking bucks 400 alchemy bucks 2 billion per day from life skill it will be amazing it would be amazing of course it is not a free thing people will spend thousands of hours for to do that not thousands like dozens of hours for to do that it is not free and it will be good and it will also this will also save the life skill market i'm not kidding the life skill market is it feels so bad it's because the imperial alchemy and imperial cooking feels so bad that's why life skill feels it's kind of dead because the two main life skills in the game alchemy and cooking most of the other life skills they serve for alchemy farming gathering even fishing maybe indirectly like the other life skills they served to them never mind let's go the earth buff from the black shrine bosses should have a life skill buff life skill x buff of 40 percent added and the sun buff should have a life skill mastery plus 50. the moon buff should have plus 100 weight limit why every these kind of buffs it contains pv or pvp related but why there is no life skill buffs in these things why why and why another good idea life skill and life skill mastery should be added i mean these buffs should be added the buffs exchange with the energy in black spirit 10 percent not level experience life experience life experience and 15 mastery imagine you will get it with 50 energy or something it would be good the horse transportation system needs enhancement the cooldown period should be decreased from 10 minutes to just a minute all seeds related to farming should be stackable life skill gear setup should have its own unique ui it should not be limited to tools only there should be additional life skill equipment slots in ui like armors other things that everything you can put not only tools add the ability to cancel the effects of meals elixirs and etc with a one click i think this is quality of life not a life skill i will add it in here enhance buff farming life skill by incorporating chance to collect available rare items some rare items will be good in farming contribution point soft cap should be increased from 450 to 500 a player with a processing level grew one this is amazing idea i love this idea and i'm waiting from a player with a processing level grew one or higher can deposit the materials processed from the storage back into the storage while having the pearl item the pearl costume having the pearl costume this way the afk processing time is extended allowing the players to easily process millions of materials without issue just imagine yes the pearl item you will need it still but after guru one whenever you process something from your storage it will put this it will put it again in storage and you will just leave your character afk for 10 hours 20 hours 24 hours okay just leave it and it process for you so this will also increase the online players numbers in the game amazing win-win situation barter needs an income boost it should provide someone who has reached max level around 2 billion per day the weight of the barter materials should be reduced by half add a special cape for life skillers this will display the life level using roman numerical in elegant manner for example a gathering symbol on top of that and the level of gathering below of that the menace cooking outfit should have a minus five second reduction applied similar to the alchemy the products obtained from nodes should be updated according to the current situation of the game the bandits on the map needs to be removed since they are no longer functional this was related with trade like it's so old so old things just remove it kalk blue whale rau rau and griffon should spawn at specific times 
similar to the word bosses. The rewards should be adjustable and also encouraging for all players. Node investment should provide additional life skill experience and a mastery bonus. Let's talk about PV. You should be able to enter the pit of undying in every part of the world except in arenas such special places. Additional party contents should be included in the game. More spots for 2, 3, 5 men parties are needed. Please, we need 10 party spots, do it PA. Just do it. People starving for that. Afaru in all maps should be updated. Its drop table is completely outdated. For solo boss splits, Calamity level 8, 9 and 10 should be added. In particular, the rewards for the level 10 should be set in a way that the time spent is worthwhile. Hopefully they will not be trash. Updates should be made for existing 3 different sections of attraction. Rewards should be adjusted according to the current gear levels. Additionally, the easy difficulty level should be designed for 300 AP, while the hard difficulty level should be organized based on 330 AP as well, just like party boss bullet system. Ford Atraxion or Zakia should be added to the game. As a result of this situation, if parties complete 4 dungeons and are from the same guild, they should provide additional rewards to players from other guilds, similar to the Black Shrine bosses. A special UI should be designed for rankings, allowing players to track their times from there. Okay, here is the Laurzeka costume thing. You will like it. The Laurzeka costume for horses should be added for the evaluation of the leaf and the lungs item. Imagine there will be Laurzeka horse costume. This costume should be craftable with 5 left lungs and 5 right lungs. The crafted costume should be sellable in central market, minimum price 2 billion, maximum price 20 billion. You're welcome. The color of Orzeka costume's eye glow should be adjustable. This way, it can achieve an aesthetic appearance when used with a Sovran weapon. It glow red, red right now, isn't it? But the Sovran weapon glow yellow. So, why not change it? It will be good. It can match. It looks good. Enhance the party and platoon finder system. Introduce certain requirements, such as minimum most rapey and etc. Fangs? No. We can add it. We can add it, sneaky. Please uh, type a sentence for me. We can add it. A proper sentence, I will add it. Fix some bosses in Black Shrine, collusion hitboxes such as Songakshi. Plus 20% Black Spirit Rage should be added as 6 Debroka set effect. Adjust guild quests and add some filtering option. Make levels more meaningful. Allow players to receive valuable rewards once per family after reaching level 65. For example, for level 66, 300 fail stack. For level 67, 1000 fail stack and etc. Decrease the time gate of the Dekia Lantern spots. This way, the players and the parties who perform better than average can be rewarded for their efforts. Please do not make BDO a game that punishes skilled and hardcore players. Restore and rework the Ultra Blood, please. Revive the dead classes in PvE. The main goal of the last class reworks was to elevate all classes to Wusa succession level. However, these classes are significantly worse than Wusa Succession. Please urgently buff these classes. Awakening Warrior, Succession Sorcerer, Succession Ranger, sorry. Succession Berserker, Maeva, Succession Valkyrie, Kenochi, Succession Mystic, Hashashin, Succession Nova, yeah, please. Succession Drakania, Awakening Drakania, Awakening Wusa, Awakening Maegu, and Awakening Corsair. You don't really understand the lantern part? The time gate. So, here is the thing. Whenever you try to grind fast in the Dekia Lantern, there's time, there are time gates. For example, this time gate is, for Olun, it is 5 minutes 45 seconds. For other spots, maybe 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. So, no matter how fast you kill the mobs, they will spawn minimum in 15 seconds. So, it just puts a limit. It just puts a, some maximum threshold for you. For example, you want to grind fast, you're grinding 2 hours a day, and you care about efficiency, you cannot be efficient as much as you can, as much as you want. The time gated response better. Per person version of it, it should be more challenging and we can defeat the Dekia version of the monster to provide us with around 5 times more reward since we have more if you, since we have used five times more materials. And I said, okay, good. If you can add archer my dear friend Archer is S tier grinder. If you cannot play if you do not know how to play Archer, that's your problem. Archer is amazing class for PvE, okay? Please learn how to play it. Alright, continue. Dekia option should be added for Sakraya Underwater 340 AP and 
Potix Island, 310 AP. They are the only ones with the treasure items that lack of Dekia Lantern option, allow individuals to convert their Agris Fever into Agris Coin. For 30k Agris Fever, you will be able to get one Agris Coin. No one except the individuals who activates the Dekia Lantern and their party members should be able to damage the mobs. If there is no action for over a minute, the Lantern should automatically turn off. The cost to turn the Dekia Lantern on and off should be reduced to zero. The Succession Skill Kit should include plus 10% to 25% BSR skills. This is necessary for the unmount operations. For Tamer, for Horses, for Cannons, this will help it. 10 to 25% for Succession. I think this should be in PvP section, not PvE. A book should be added to book slot specifically for grinding, similar to a tom. Right now, like we talked about Ibeder things, okay. You forgot to write down Fire J. Okay. So let's talk about PvP. 50 men, uncapped node war option should be added. Scores in guild wars should be completely removed. This situation creates unnecessary pressure on the guild that are fighting each other. It is necessary to do this for a higher quality and more balanced PvP environment. So here is the perfect solution for war deck changes. It will completely eliminate the abuse and it will be good things. The Guild War declaration system should be reintroduced to the game. However, to prevent abuse, the cost associated with declaring war should be significantly increased. The fee to declare war should be set at 500 million silver. And the daily maintenance cost for keeping the war active should be 5 billion silver. This approach eliminates the potential for system abuse and ensures that the warring parties are financially impacted, akin to real life. Additionally, if a guild undeclares a war, they should not be allowed to declare it again for two weeks in same guild. If both sides agree to war, the daily cost can be reduced to 1 billion silver for each guild. Right now, this is the perfect solution for the war deck changes that maybe we can bring it back. There is no point to abuse it, literally no point. If you want to keep the war open, every day 5 billion silver is huge. No one can abuse it. Like even big guilds can abuse it. It's because you will lose insane amount of money from your guild storage, which is big. If both sides agrees, there should be no costs. No, there should be costs. 1 billion is okay. Offensive artifacts should be introduced to counter defensive decky artifacts. The stats for one artifact should be as follows. Extra damage to human plus 10. All accuracy plus 12. Attack and cast speed plus 1%. All damage reduction minus 6, all evasion minus 10. This is for one artifact. Multiply with them, multiply them too. The Aaron of Arsha's weapon skin should include design for both pre awakening and sub weapons versions. Previously, players who had won multiple times were given the opportunity to acquire these. An adventurer who has won the tournament three times should be able to obtain three distinct skins. The succession skill kit include 10% and 25% BSR skills. This is necessary for the unmount operations. Yep. A term of players who have complete mastery of their classes should be gathered under one roof. These players should submit a report to the PA every few months regarding the ongoing issues in their classes and the solutions to those problems. This way, a more balanced game environment can be established. The reporting can be facilitated through an official Discord server. Players from each class can share their ideas in the relevant channel. The responsible class master will then compile these ideas and present them in a coherent report. Damage testing should be feasible within the battle arena by incorporating dummies. These dummies should be interactable. Upon interaction, their classes should be identifiable. Identifiable, sorry. And all stats such as DR, evasion, evasion rate, and etc. should be manually adjustable, enabling build optimization during the damage test. A document that clearly presents the total damage should be displayed in the manner that allows the players to view it in game. You set your character stats according to your wish and also the, your character, the, your opponent's character. For example, Hashashin, 600 DR, 1.3k evasion. This is evasion rate, this is total HP, blah 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 blah. Activate the game, you, you hit it, stop the game, you take the results. That's what we need because everyone using me as dummy. <laughs> okay, okay. An update should be made regarding how the dummies in arena are realistically affected by the CCs. When the float CC is applied, 
The duration the dummy stays in the air does not align with the actual float duration. This needs to be corrected. The chance of down smashes should be set to 30% instead of 100%. Attack decision text such as down attack, critical, immune, etc. should be activated for them too. Alpha server must become increasingly active. Hotspots may appear randomly from time to time and the income from these spots should be higher than of the normal ones. Players will visit these spots with their PvP gear to fight and earn silver. For this, the AP requirements for these spots should be low, as the damage gap between PV and PvP gear is significant. Additionally, large or strong guilds will want to engage in these spots as well. So organic GVGs. Very nice idea. We need accessories except the Barocas. Everyone is aiming for 5 Debrokas because it is best in slot. We need alternatives to alternatives to Debos. For example, stronger Narc, Ronaro, stronger Sisu Centaur, Kadri, and etc. RBF AOS should be more rewardable, like 800 million to 1.5 billion per hour depends to your contribution. Class modifiers should be eliminated or the gap should be reduced. In the War of the Roses, NPCs and the bosses tankiness level should be adjusted based on the player's PvP gear stat level. Remove all extra stats in War of the Roses. There should be only one type capped gear for Node War, Siege War, AOS and etc. Reduce the variety of the capped content to a single type of capped gear level. This will simplify the balancing of capped and uncapped PvP content. The amount of the stats sacrificed to counter the resists one of the defensive stats in the game is quite low. To address this issue, the amount of the ignore resists obtained from the crystals should be doubled. This way, the resist stats can become a more casual defensive stats that you can be countered with less sacrifice, similar to DR versus AP, evasion versus accuracy situation. In today's conditions, even a cube 6 crystals may not suffice to counter 2 crystals, which is very bad. You should be able to use the emergency escape skill to escape even if you are in a grab animation such as striker like berserker grabs. So let's talk about node war changes that we were expecting. The node war duration must be at least 40 minutes. After this period, it can conclude at a random time up to 90 minutes. During the node war, the time required to obtain a flag should be reduced to a minute to ensure a swift setup. This adjustment will prevent attacking guilds from experiencing time loss. A scoring system should be implemented like siege wars to that of Node War system. The guilds holding the fort should earn a specific number of points for each minute they maintain the control of fort. Losing the fort should result in a deduction of points, while capturing it should correspond to a desired number of points. Points should also be gained and lost based on the total kills and deaths, but the number of kills and the deaths should not significantly impact the overall balance of points. The Watcher's HP should be halved. The Flame Tower's HP should be reduced by 20%. The surrounding builds around the fort should be completely destroyed when fort is lost. The previous fort owner's guild should not be able to quickly inflict damage with the Flame Towers and Huachas to easily reclaim the fort back. Huacha and structures like the Flame Tower should not be able to damage the fort. This way, increasing of relying on Huachas in surrounding settlements to reduce the force HP and mutual attacks can be organized for more active PvP, allowing for the fort to be captured. As long as the number of the guilds applying for the regions does not exceed 11, all guilds should be arranged to fight in a single area. This ensures that even in situations where the number of applicants is low, all guilds will still battle, still battle in the same region. For example, until the number of the guilds applying for the Balanus and Serendia region exceeds 11, all guilds should fight in a single area, either Balanus or Serendia. This battle area should be specified in the last 15 minutes before the fight starts and should be random. All names of competitors and the guilds on the battlefield should remain hidden. The names of all opponents should be displayed as anonymous enemy. This will minimize the level of diplomacy during the battle. Guild strategies will become more self-serving, resulting in a more chaotic PvP environment. Such chaos in PvP will, in turn, lead to higher quality and organic PvP. For Siege Wars, we couldn't find like amazing ideas for it because we like the Siege Wars, but the reward for winning the uncapped Siege should be 8 billion silver. 
Rewards for guild ranked on the leaderboard should start at 3 billion for second place and decrease thereafter. The rewards for winning the capped siege should be 5 billion silver. Rewards for guilds ranked on the leaderboard should start at 2 billion for second place and decrease thereafter. Just like in Node Wars, horses should accompany us every time we respawn. Alright, this is the whole recommendation report that we gathered from the community. I don't know if you like it, I don't know what you think, but you know what? I like to read all your thoughts in the comment section. Type what you know, what you feel about these things. Maybe you can add something new because I will be there and I will be reading all of your thoughts. Please type something. I hope you guys like my content. Do not forget, video is just a game. Have a nice game.